The current cohort of NMPs, Mr. Abdul Samad, Ms. Janet Ang, Mr. Mark Che, Professor Hun, Mr. Ching Sing Yao, Professor Kolian Pin, Mr. Joshua Thomas Raj, Dr. Shahira Binti Abdullah, and Dr. Tan Yaswam joined us in Parliament in most unusual circumstances. It was in the midst of a global pandemic and while we were still in Doscon Orange. Their first experience of Parliament was one where all had to be masked and we had split seating. First, two seats apart, with some members having to sit up in the galleries. And this gradually changed to one seat apart, with all having to speak from this central table behind glass enclosures and having to wipe microphones and the table top with disinfectant wipes. The fact that this all now seems to be in the distant past shows how far we have come and what an amazing journey was made in this last two and a half years, a journey that this cohort of NMPs walked with us. They covered several important milestones with us during their tenure, measures to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic and position Singapore for a post-pandemic future, support to households through rising costs of living, Singapore's Green Plan, the White Paper on Women's Development, the repeal of Section 377A and the constitutional amendment regarding challenges to the definition of marriage, and support for the GST Bill, thereby ensuring the viability of publicly funded health care for Singaporeans in the years ahead as our population ages. They championed causes they cared deeply about, ranging from economic growth and employment opportunities, health care, sports and sustainability. At the last parliament sitting, three NMPs tabled the motion on supporting health care to call for the government to provide consistent and sustainable support for health care beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. They have presented their views passionately and contributed constructively to the robust debates in this House over the last two years. They were also mindful of what this parliament represents and stands for. In the Committee of Supply earlier this year, Mr. Cheng Seng Yao made an important cut on an effective parliament and what that means, as well as the values and the principles which underpin it. The NMPs are leaving this house in very cir different circumstances from when they first joined. We are now back in Doscon Green. Things have stabilised and life is mostly back to normal. While as a country and a people, we still face many challenges, we are in a much better place than we were two to three years ago, and we are now poised to move forward with the Forward Singapore SG exercise to refresh our social compact and make Singapore a fairer and more inclusive society. By their participation in this parliament, they have helped to achieve this current state of affairs. I hope the NMPs will remember their time in Parliament fondly and that they will continue to give close attention to issues of national interest, follow parliamentary proceedings and contribute to our national building efforts in their personal or professional capacities. Now let me say a few words on Senior Minister Taman. Today is his last sitting day as he has announced his intention to step down as a Member of Parliament. SM Taman has served as a Member of Parliament for more than two decades since 2001. In fact, we entered Parliament at the same time in the same batch. In that time, he has made many contributions through his different ministerial appointments, including Minister for Education, Minister for Finance, Deputy Prime Minister, Coordinating Minister for Economic and Social Policies, and most recently, Senior Minister. SM was also the Chairman of the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Deputy Chairman of the, Singapore, the Government of Singapore Investment Corporation, or GIC, and chaired its Investment Strategies Committee, and was Chairman of the Economic Development Board's International Advisory Council. As Minister for Finance, SM Tharman, through his many budget statements in this parliament, boosted our economic growth and helped steer Singapore through the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2009. He oversaw economic restructuring efforts, including chairing the Economic Strategies Committee post-crisis to promote inclusive and resilient economic growth and ensured fiscal sustainability. He introduced the Net Investment Returns, or NIR, framework, 
which provided additional resources for government spending to benefit Singaporeans while balancing today's needs and savings for the future needs of generations to come. He also introduced the permanent GST voucher scheme to help lower to middle-income Singaporeans cope with their GST expenses. As Minister for Education, SM broadened the definition of merit and provided, Singap provided students with more educational pathways and opportunities to explore their diverse talents and excel in their chosen fields. He initiated major policy changes, including the introduction of the direct school admission scheme and removal of streaming at primary levels. In his economic and manpower portfolios, he pushed for inclusive growth that translates into good jobs and wages for all Singaporeans. He led the Skills Future program to encourage lifelong learning and upskilling among Singaporeans. SM also paid special attention to uplift wages and improve retirement adequacy, especially for the lower wage workers through measures such as the progressive wage model, wage credit scheme, work for income supplement, and refining our central provident fund system. More recently, during the pandemic, SM chaired the National Jobs Council to safeguard jobs and create employment and training opportunities for Singaporeans. We will miss SM Thaman in this chamber, not least his commanding presence and his erudite speeches. I think SM's greatest gift is really in making very complex economic principles sound simple. At least, I thought they sounded simple. Um, they sounded very profound. You weren't quite sure exactly what he was saying, but it, it sounded, sounded you know, <laughs> like, like they made a lot of sense. Um, but we also will miss his wit and his dry humor. But I think most of all, we will miss a friend and a fellow member of parliament. In conclusion, Madam Deputy Speaker, on behalf of this house, I would like to place on record our appreciation to the NMPs and SM Taman for their contributions to this house and service to the nation. I believe that all members of the House will join the Leader in thanking the nine NMPs, Mr. Abdul Samad, Professor Hun Hien Tik, Ms. Janet Ang, Professor Kulian Pin, Dr. Shahira Abdullah, Mr. Mark Che, Dr. Tan Yaswam, Mr. Raj Joshua Thomas, and Mr. Ching Xin Yao, as well as SM Taman for their service in Parliament.